Bodie Lang here. I've gone through the Michigan affidavits and they're pretty striking. And I know every people are busy and not everybody can read through them. So I thought I would just share the findings to make it easier for you, for anyone out there to understand what they say. I apologize if the sound sucks in this video. It might, um, cause I'm doing this video at a different location, but, uh, so the first one I want to go through is affidavit 14. Here's the source, Russell James Ramsland, uh, part of an allied security operations group, worked with the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, CIA, etc. So a guy who has some idea what he's talking about. So what stood out to me of his affidavit was, number 11, he reveals 643 precincts with voter turnout above 80%. Uh, further, if these very limited remaining public data votes were normalized to 80% turnout, the excess votes are at least 36,800 over the maximum that could be expected. And he lists a number of precincts that are either at 100% or above. Obviously, being above 100% is something that can't happen. Then he goes to um, the data strongly suggests that there was an algorithm that could rank or weight certain votes. The result then awards the winner based on points that the algorithm computes, not actual voter votes. The fact that we observed raw vote data coming directly from the Dominion data feed that includes decimal places proves that the winner was selected by an algorithm and not individual voters' choice. Otherwise, votes would be solely represented as whole numbers. And you can see on the right-hand side here, the vote totals are, are in decimals, which doesn't make sense. He goes on, another statistical red flag in Michigan concerns the dramatic shift in votes, a significant irregularity surfaces until the tabulated voter turnout reached approximately 83%. Trump was generally winning between 55 and 60% of every turnout point. Then after the voting count was closed at 2 a.m., the situation dramatically reversed itself, starting with this series of impossible spikes shortly after counting was supposed to have stopped. The spikes cast almost entirely for Biden could easily be produced in the Dominion EMS control system by preloading batches of blank ballots and files such as write-ins, then casting them almost all for Biden using the override procedure. A reversal that is almost statistically difficult to explain, as is the impossibility of the votes cast to the number of voters described previously. He goes on, and this is my favorite part. He says, the final red flag is perhaps the greatest. Something occurred in Michigan that is physically impossible, indicating the results were manipulated on election night. The event, as reflected in the data, are the four spikes totaling 384,000 ballots allegedly processed in a combined interval of only two hour and 38 minutes. This is physically impossible given the equipment available at the four reference locations. Then he talks about the model of the machines, can process 60 images a minute, 2,000 ballots per hour, which is probably generous. This calculation yields a sum of 94,867 ballots is the maximum number of ballots that could be processed. And it should be noted in the event of a jam and the counter is not reset, the ballots can be run through again, effectively duplicating them. The existence of the spike is indicative of a manual adjustment either by the operator or this, of the system or an attack by outside actors. In any event, there were 289,866 more ballots processed in the time available for processing in four precincts slash townships than there was processing capacity. And he shows you this graph here where you can see these major spikes for Biden. And he's pointing them out saying they didn't have enough machines to count this many ballots. This is impossible. So that's a pretty big red flag, but it gets worse. Oh, it gets worse. So I want to go to Affidavit 19 because this one is good. So Affidavit 19, uh, this person, Navid, I don't, I can't pronounce his last name, bachelor's degree in electrical, electrical and computer engineering, blah, 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 very qualified person. I am employed by a large defense contractor as a chief cybersecurity engineer and su subject matter expert in cybersecurity. He's conducted, you know, several security counterintelligence operations and forensic investigations on hundreds of systems, blah, blah, blah. So some person, this expert knows what he's doing. What does he have to say? He says uh, there have been tools have been developed, hammer and scorecard tools. The hammer and scorecard capabilities are trade-offs used by US intelligence analysts to conduct MITM, which is man in the middle, attacks in foreign voting systems, including the Dominion voting system, democracy suite and systems and software voting machines without leaving an electronic footprint. As such, these tools are used by nefarious operators to influence voting systems by covertly accessing DVS and altering the results in real time without leaving an electronic footprint. 
He goes on, I performed forensic analysis of electronic voting systems, including the DVS Democracy Suite, blah, 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 used in hundreds of precincts in key battleground states. I discovered major exploitable vulnerabilities in DVS that permit a nefarious operator to perform sensitive functions via its built-in covert backdoor. The backdoor enables an operator to access to perform system updates and testing via the internet without detection. However, it can also be used to conduct illicit activities such as shifting votes, deleting votes, or adding votes in real time without leaving a trace. DVS has a strategic relationship with Venezuela and um, organizations who have significant ownership by Hugo Chavez that helps basically uh, Venezuelan dictators to win elections. It also says that DVS is comprised of several companies which obfuscate its true organizational and ownership structures. I conclude that corporate structures were partially designed to obfuscate their complex relationships, especially with Venezuela, China, and Cuba, and impede discovery by investigators. In 2019, a computer laptop and several USB memory cards containing the cryptographic key to access DVS systems were stolen in Philadelphia. I believe that USB memory cards were used to facilitate administrative access to the back door to disrupt polling operations and impact ballot counting across Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Wisconsin. Ooh. In my expert opinion, these systems are vulnerable to data manipulation by unauthorized means. The cryptographic key store on DVS thumb drive reportedly stolen in Philadelphia was used to alter vote counts prior to upchain reporting. Since DVS uses the same cryptographic key for all of its voting systems in all battleground states, the key allowed a remote operator to conduct massive attacks on all battleground state data without being detected. Approximately 4.30 a.m. Eastern on November 4th, the day after the election, the vote counts favored Vice President Biden by nearly 80% in many jurisdictions. The data variance favoring Biden continues to accelerate after 4.30 a.m. Eastern and continues through November 9th. This abnormality in variance is evident by the unusually steep slope for Biden in all key battleground states. A sudden rise in slope is not normal and demonstrates data manipulation by artificial means. Trump's lead of more than 700,000 was reduced to less than 300,000 in a few short hours, which is not, does not occur in the real world without external influence. I conclude that manually feeding more than 400,000 mostly absentee ballots cannot be accomplished in a short time frame without illegal vote count alteration. Edison County, Biden received more than 100% of votes at 5.59 p.m. Eastern on November 4th. And again, he received 99.6% of the votes at 2.23 p.m. Eastern on November 5th. These distributions are cause for concern and, and indicate fraud. Dominion Voting Systems acknowledge that Chinese-made parts are used in its voting machines. However, the company is unwilling to share details on its supply chains, foreign ownership, or its relationship with China, Venezuela, and Cuba. In particular, I have seen USIC intelligence reports showing China's espionage activities in the United States and efforts to infiltrate elections. Uh, a man-in-the-middle cyber attack was carried out by covert operators using sophisticated tools such as Hammer and Scorecard. The attack occurred in two ways. Initially, remote operatives used USB memory cards containing cryptographic keys and access system backdoors to alter votes in battleground states. The attack was structured to ensure sufficient data alteration had occurred prior to forwarding the tally results uh, to the election night reporting. The reason election data are forwarded overseas is to avoid detection and monitoring by the USIC to obfuscate the man in the middle attack. This person conducted detailed analysis of the New York Times data sets and have discovered significant anomalies are caused by fraudulent manipulation of the results. In my expert judgment, the evidence is widespread and throughout all battleground states I have studied. I conclude the following. The vote count distribution in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia are not based on normal system operation. Instead, they are caused by fraudulent electronic manipulation of the targeted voting machines. On approximately 2.30 a.m. Eastern, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia have decided to cease vote count operations and will continue the following day. The unanimous decision to intentionally stop voting by all five key battleground states is highly unusual and possibly unprecedented and demonstrates prior coordination by election officials in battleground state. There would be no legitimate reason battleground states need to pre-coordinate election activities and stop ongoing adjudication process. However, it is equally positive. It is equally puzzling that the vote counting did not stop as reported. In fact, it continued behind closed doors in early hours of November 4th. This activity is highly unusual and demonstrates collusion to achieve desired results without being monitored by watchers. Now remember that because I'm going to go into, there's a lot of reports about that, which I'll mention. In my expert opinion, these systems have not produced auditable results in the 2020 election. 
It is evident that ballots were not properly validated, system records were not kept, and the system experienced considerable instability even several days prior to November 4th. The disparity in data distribution after 4.30 a.m. on November 4th indicates significant systemic anomalies that were widespread among all battleground states. The evidence is both extensive and persuasive and indicates large-scale fraud by remote operators. I conclude that a combination of loss Cryptographic key contained on stolen USB memory cards, serious exploitable system and software vulnerabilities, and operating system backdoor created the perfect environment to commit widespread fraud in all states where these systems are installed. My analysis of the 2020 election from New York Times data shows statistical anomalies across the battleground state votes. These failures are widespread and systemic and sufficient to invalidate the vote counts. Ooh, that was a big one. He closes with, I conclude with high confidence that the election 2020 data were altered in all battleground states, resulting in hundreds of thousands of votes that were cast for President Trump to be transferred to Vice President Biden. Boom. Kind of a big deal, no? The media doesn't seem to think so, including Fox, which is really annoying. Okay, um, I want to go to Affidavit. Let's do 15. So Affidavit 15, the name is redacted. But this person is an elect electronic intelligence analyst, worked with the military, uh, extensive experience as a white hat hacker used by some of the top election specialists in the world. Um, so someone who knows what he's talking about again. So this affidavit is him basically saying that on a specific date of October 30th, 2020, CISA and the FBI reports that Iranian APT teams were seen using website scanning software to find vulnerabilities within election company websites. And his conclusion here, this person says, these scanning behaviors showed that foreign agents of aggressor nations had access to U.S. voter lists and had done so recently. In my professional opinion, this affidavit presents unambiguous evidence that Dominion voter systems and Edison research have been accessible and were certainly compromised by rogue actors such as Iran and China. Notice this person says, and were certainly compromised by rogue actors such as iran and china so this is under the penalty of perjury this person is not saying that maybe possibly could have been no saying they were certainly compromised by rogue actors such as iran and china um this affidavit is super technical so it may go over some people's heads including my own but this person goes through a bunch of screenshots where they show uh, existence of Iranian servers and Chinese parts. Uh, and he says, Edison's research's primary job is to report the tabulation of the count of the ballot information as received from the tabulation software. A public network scan of dominionvoting.com on November 8th revealed the following interrelationships and revealed 13 unencrypted passwords for Dominion employees and 75 hashed passwords. And he points out the Iranian server. And I'll just flash some screenshots here that you can pause and, and look at if you're interested. But this Sabbath David from this you know, cybersecurity expert is saying that the systems were infiltrated by hostile countries, which is significant. Let me go to affidavit 12. Affidavit 12, my name is Dr. Eric Quinnell, talks about his credentials. I was asked to analyze the results of the 2020 general election in Wayne and Oakland counties, Michigan, to determine if there were any statistical anomalies in voting, and if so, to perform a predictive modeling analysis to analyze these anomal those anomalies. What does he say? As an example of the anomalous vote gains above the norm, consider the township of Troy broken into precincts. Nearly every single precinct first achieves the entire 2016 vote total for each party, but then a new population of votes skews excessively in favor of the Biden vote resulting in a new vote population that is voting that is voting 82 Democrat to 20 Republican ratio in a township that as recent as 2016 was almost evenly split 51 Democrat 49 Republican. Additionally, the votes gained by Biden were well outpaced even the new registrations in the township, gaining 109% of the new registered voters and 98% of the new votes above 2016. He also goes into Wayne County, says that uh, the data and Republican ratio added votes gained for Biden over Trump in this area was 2.32 times. As an example of the anomalous vote gains above the norm, Wayne County consider the township of Livonia broken into precincts. Nearly every single precinct first achieves the entire 2016 vote total for each party, but then a new population of votes skews excessively in favor of Biden, resulting in a new vote population, 76% Democrat, 24% Republican, in a township that as recent as 2016 was Republican. Additionally, the votes gained by Biden well outpaced even the new registrations in the township, gaining 151% of the new registered voters and 97% of the new votes above 2016. Now, there's some people who will look at that and be like, well, just because 
Biden crushed Trump um, in certain precincts isn't evidence of fraud, even if they are, you know, maybe they just, maybe they just didn't like Trump. The problem with that is Trump has a 94% approval rate among Republicans, 94% approval among Republicans, and that people hating Trump didn't, didn't come to fruition in any other states except for the key battleground states. So no, no, I'm just, no. Thanks though. The voting distribution gains for 2020 are well outside the 2016 ratio of a multitude of 1.24 for Wayne County and 1.19 for Oakland County, specific, specifically for every one additional voter Donald Trump won. Biden gained 2.32 additional voters from 2016 and 2.5 in Oakland County. At a county or district level of analysis, statistical anomalies appear in even greater ratios. Biden gained 3.2 new voters to every one new Trump voter. Biden also achieved 97% of all additional new votes above 2016 general election to totals. Such mathematical anomalies are not seen in all townships of both Wayne and Oakland counties, but rather only a select few. In all, I identified some 40,771 votes as statistically anomalous in Wayne County and some 46,000 votes in Oakland County. So this guy found 80 plus thousand votes that don't make sense in just these two counties. Kind of a big deal. And then he goes on to talk about his predictive modeling and what it would look like. I'm not going to go into that though, but I will show you the screenshots just in case you want to take a look. Um, okay, we have a few more. Uh, Affidavit 7 talks about mysterious vans that were dropping off trash bags seemingly full of mysterious ballots. This person, uh, Matt Sintar, maybe uh, even provides a couple of pictures of these trash bags that were picked up full of votes. So I witnessed a couple late teens, early 20s pull into a parking lot of the post office and proceed to exit their van which had no markings to approach the rear of the van and opened up the back hatch and proceeded to take three to four very large clear plastic bags out of the rear of the van and walk them over to a running UP USPS vehicle that appeared as if it was waiting for them. The two individuals, one man and one woman, proceeded to drop these bags at the rear of the post office vehicle that was equipped with the lift gate. There was no interaction between the couple and any USPS employee, which I felt was very odd. It is. You'd think you would sign something or there would be some sort of interaction before you just take this stuff. Uh, they did not walk inside the post office like a normal customer to drop off mail. It was as if the postal worker was told to meet and stand by until these large bags arrived. As you can see in the pictures, the bags were clear plastic with markings in black on the bag, and on the inside of these clear bags was another plastic bag that was not clear. It was black garbage bag looking bag. These bags were all the same clear bag on the outside, black on the inside, markings on the clear bag, and what looked like a black security zip tie on each back as if it were a tamper evident type of a device to secure the bag. Okay. So affidavits three and four have, there are a bunch of testimony from different people at polling places. So it's not like the others where there's one, there's one story. There's a bunch in these affidavits. And I've kind of picked up, picked out a few of my favorites here. This is in Michigan. I observed tables 123 and 120 at both table 123 and 120. I noticed USPS boxes of ballots beneath the table. I was able to observe that many of these ballots in the boxes were either straight ticket Republican or had votes for Donald Trump. These ballots seem to be separated from the rest of the ballots being counted. I believe some of these workers were changing votes that had been cast for Donald Trump and other Republicans. I observed ballots with cursive writing notes at the top right hand corner. I observed approximately 500 ballots with this writing. These ballots did not have ballot codes on them. Uh, here's an affidavit from Christopher Shornock. He says, At each counting board, the poll workers attempted to block me from observing. I was verbally abused and intimidated by not only the Democratic poll challengers, but the ACLU and other organizations. And there's a ton of affidavits talking about threats, intimidation, blocking, stuff like that. Um, this person says, I observed ballots that were not in the electronic log or the paper poll log. These would be considered spoiled ballots. I observed these ballots being counted. And he talks about another poll worker. She would put the spoiled ballots into a separate pile and go away from the counting board for a while. She would return approximately 20, 30 minutes later and return the spoiled ballots to the pile of ballots to be counted. I observed the same poll worker do this same process over many tables and over many hours. I observed that the military ballot duplication process was only performed by two Democrats rather than one Democrat and one Republican. Now remember that because military ballots will come up again. Another affidavit from Braden something says, the table is counting a stack of about 35 ballots that all appear to have pink challenge stickers on them. 
None of these ballots appeared to be in the digital database of voters, so the people at the table were simply entering names and addresses into the computer with birth dates of January 1st, 1900. I personally was able to observe the January 1st, 1900 birth dates on the computer. There were also addresses and names which I could not verify because I wasn't allowed close enough to the table for long enough to compare anything. I told the table I was challenging every one of these ballots. They laughed and said I just can't do that. I did find it odd that throughout the day and night I saw a few dozen military ballots be counted. Although I cannot provide specific numbers or names, I can estimate that at least 80% of the military ballots I saw were straight ticket Democrat or simply had Joe Biden's name filled out on them. I had always been told the military personnel tended to be more conservative and this struck out, stuck out to me as the day went on. This isn't even exclusive to Michigan. In the Georgia affidavits, which I'm not going to go over, but I will just flash this part, there is a precinct in Fulton County where all 900 military ballots were for Joe Biden. And the military tends to be a right-leaning demographic. So you in Michigan, you have this person saying that eight, they saw 80% of the military ballots were straight ticket Democrat or Joe Biden votes. And in Fulton County, Georgia, there were 100% of the military ballots went for Biden, which is ridiculous. Another person in the affidavit three, at approximately 4.50 a.m., I witnessed a man spraying a chemical on a ballot counting machine. He then placed 27 ballots into the machine, and I noticed tape on the top of the ballot where a ballot number would normally be. Throughout the night, I witnessed him insert these same 27 ballots at least five times. Okay. Catching on, <laughs> you catching the trend here? Uh, I mean, there's so much more. I'll just go over a couple more things that I thought were interesting. This is affidavit four by two people in the Great Lakes area. Now, this person is focused on the, st the shenanigans that happened after the voting uh, or after November 3rd. This person says, on November 4th, a city of Detroit election worker was instructed to improperly predate the absentee ballots received date that were not in the QVF as if they had been received on or before November 3rd. She estimates that this was done to thousands of ballots. And then he talks about illegal double voting. And then it talks about the first round of new ballots. So here's at approximately 4 a.m. on November 4th, tens of thousands of ballots were suddenly brought into the counting room through the back door. These new ballots were brought to the TCF center by vehicles with out-of-state license plates. It was observed that all of these new ballots were cast for Joe Biden. Okay. At approximately 9 p.m. on November 4th, numerous boxes of ballots were brought to the TF TCF Center, so a new batch. Upon information and belief, the Wayne County Clerk's Office instructed the ballot counters to use the date of birth, January 1st, 1900, on all of these newly appearing ballots. None of the names of these new ballots corresponded with any registered voter. Election workers inputted all of these new ballots into the QVF and manually added each voter to the list after 9 p.m. A poll challenger witnessed tens of thousands of ballots being delivered to the TCF center that were not in any approved, sealed, or tamper-proof container. Large quantities of ballots were delivered to the TCF center in what appeared to be mail bins with open tops. Contrary to law, these ballot bins and containers did not have lids, were not sealed, and did not have the capability of having a metal seal. So they're, fraud they're fraudulent votes. That's what they are. So those are just some of the highlights um, from the affidavits. There's a bunch more, but I think when you look at that, and what was presented in those affidavits is pretty obvious. There's nefarious activities happening and there's a ton of fraud. So obviously there's lots of fraud happening here. Um, it's This is really bad. And um, I kind of put this video out so that people know more about what the affidavit said and some of the key points. Because it's obvious there's fraud. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your support of my channel, Bodhi Lang. I may put out another video if there are more findings.